Well, as I did with the, uh, you can see on the YouTube channel here, as I did with the Tika T3, I thought I would do a gun review, um, another gun review, and uh, this time I've chosen um, the SKS. Um, there's a lot of people seems to own these things. There's a heap of them that have flooded the world civilian market since since the end of the Cold War, I guess. Um, the the SKS. There was a couple of versions made of these little rifle. There was um, the Russians and the Chinese both made them, and I don't know if there's other Soviet bloc countries or whatever making them nowadays. But um, but they were kind of the predecessor, I guess you could say, of the um, of the AK-47. And uh, this one is the uh, the Chincom. This is the Chinese version. Um, and uh, the Chincom 56 uh, SKS. The um, uh, this one, this particular gun here, um, due to the laws and regulations of, of New Zealand here where I'm at, um, we had to sporterise them, um, which I didn't mind because this is specifically I bought this specifically for hunting, as opposed to uh, feeling the need to buy it to defend myself. But um, anyway, this has been sporterised so that the hinge plate magazine on it has actually been cut down. Um, and it holds a uh, seven. It holds seven rounds. But I think when you buy the, um, if you buy them overseas or get, you get the, um, the the military style semi-automatics, they will uh, they'll have a ten round hinge plate magazine on them. Um, the bayonet lugs on this one have obviously been shaved off. Um, again, like I say, it was for hunting as opposed to as opposed to uh, anything else anyway. And um, what else do they have to do to it? Oh, and according to the the um, the regulations in this country, we have to we're not allowed thumb hole stocks and uh, uh, pistol grip stocks on the um, on the firearm. The safety switch is just a little lever here. It actually is just a little trigger inhibitor, inhibitor. Um, and uh, that's that. It's a gas operated semi automatic. Um, just to point out, the very easy to pull apart and put together. They're still used by a number of um, of the armed forces around the world at the moment. I think I know that. Um, I know at the very least the Kenyan security forces still use them. Um, and I don't know who else still does, but anyway, once you pull it apart, this is your main breech mechanism. You just slip a little little piece that slips in there like that against with your pin. And you push your push it back down like, there like that. So do that magazine so it flips forward. Then put your casing on the back. spring spring and pin gets locked in there if you can see that very uncomplicated right. anyway, that's it. and then there's a gas piston which sits in here and that gets loaded onto there like that and snip down click it in place and that's it she's ready to go the, uh, the rounds for this is the 7.62x39, which is basically a shortened 308. Um, very cheap, cheap ammunition. Just a, just a small round. Um, well, about a 311 it is actually. It's just marginally bigger than a 308. And uh, the weight on these things, they're, they're pretty, they're pretty lightweight. There's nothing heavy about them. I have looked at um, um, other models that have uh, both synthetic stock and uh, as well as heavier uh, Monte Carlo stocks or whatever. Which can be considerably heavier, but this one here is, is uh, I don't know, I haven't actually weighed the thing. Must be about, um, must be about five, six kg. The only drawback I, I see to these is when you, if you ever you're thinking about buying one, um, is the trigger pull on them. Now the trigger pull is very, um, they're, they're pretty hopeless for getting adjusted. I think there is some room for adjustment on the trigger pull on them, but it's very limited. So if you're ever going into a shop to buy one, have a look at your trigger pull and and think about when, when you take it that that's going to be the trigger pull that you're primarily stuck with. Um, a lot of them I have seen that they play right back um, almost to the back of the, the, the guard before they'll actually start to grab and then uh, fire off. This one here has probably about a, uh, a four millimeter uh, bit of slack and uh, the release still takes another probably two or three millimeters before it actually fires. Um, I'm used to it, it doesn't bother me but I've seen a lot worse than this. Um, and I actually haven't seen much better than that. They, they tend to be a bit hopeless with their trigger pull on them. What else about them? Um, open sighted. This one, if you ever want to put a uh, scope on them, um, because of the, the angle of ejection, when you, when you fire, the, uh, the, the shell, the empty casing, tends to come up. So when you, if you ever want to put a scope on them, you have to actually put a, a buffer plate 
um, to bounce your shell out, otherwise it's going to smack into your scope um, and, and just keep, you'll, you'll just put your scope out of a line and damage it. So there actually has to be a little plate that you'll, that you'll put out here, a little steel plate that'll fix to the side here and then out and across so that your shell just bounces, it hits that when it bounces out. Um, other than that, I can't think of much more to say about it. They, they come with a cleaning rod stuck in the in there. Those tend to be noisy, noisy things if you're going to do any hunting with it, um, any bush bashing. They tend to be a bit noisy. What I've actually done is, is uh, where it feeds through what was the old bayonet lug there, where it feeds through there I put a little piece of uh, rubber, just a bit of bike tube in there, just to hold it in place so it doesn't rattle and smack, smack around and bang around because it does clang and thump around a bit. Um, the butt plate has a little uh, little hole in it and uh, in them you get a little uh, cleaning kit, there's a little brush and brush kit and whatever else in there. They're, they're pretty hopeless, I mean they're made for the military, cheap military crap, but um, you can use it if you want it I guess. If you're in a, in a dire need somewhere and got something jammed in your barrel, that would be about the only reason I'd use it. Uh, what else? That's about it, the serial numbers are marked on the uh, both on uh, several serial numbers marked on them. They usually have one on the bottom of the mag, and again here on the on the side, and uh, there's one on, on this on the action here as well. And there should be another one etched into the uh, on the underside of this gas chain, the gas piston here, on the underside of that. That's about it. That's all I can think to say about it. We should give it a shot and see what happens. I guess. I oh, know. I just forgot to mention too. It is a top loading, um, obviously with a hinge plate magazine. They are a top loading rifle, so just have to push them down in there. Um, there is um, little clips you can buy if you want to throw five down there, but I mean, it's kind of aesthetic value really. Um, and so when you top loaded it, just bring your action back and slide it forward and she's ready to fire. You've got a, a gun that's ready to go. So we'll shoot it and see what happens. The 762 round, incidentally, I didn't say um, the size of it. it um, they're, they're probably about equate to when people think how much grunt have they got, particularly for hunting, uh, how much firepower you've actually got there. You're probably looking at the equivalent would be about a 30-30 is what most most comparable to. Um, good at 100 yards for, for up to you know red deer or I guess white tail. Um, and a lot of, I think there's a few pig hunters will use them as well, um, particularly in easy for follow-up fast shots and that if you've got a semi-automatic I guess. But yeah, out past 100 yards, 150 yards, they're good for goat shooting. Shot numerous amounts of goats with this thing, but probably out past 150, I think you'd be pushing your luck. Oh, shoot away. And on your last round, your action should stay open.